Hey guys, it's Phantom here, and welcome back to a brand new video, everybody. So, this is going to be an updated gear guide of my gear guide that I actually posted a really long time ago, like about a year ago or something, called the best gear from beginning to end, which pretty much told you where to get the best gear from the beginning to the end of the game, you know, the locations, which bosses, and everything, and a lot of you were quite receptive to that video you guys really really liked it a lot got a lot of positive reception there so now that the new world of caramel has you know came out it brought with it definitely some changes in terms of the different best gear throughout the levels the level cap was also increased to 140 so i thought i would do an upgraded gear guide for you guys covering all of the best gear from levels 1 to the max level of 140 so there's going to be a lot of information in this video so i'm going to move through each section of the video pretty fast so just pay attention maybe skip to whatever section you actually need whichever section corresponds to the gear that you're looking for but anyways i am going to be going in order of level so we're going to be starting off with you know like the gear that you're going to use from levels 1 through 24 for instance and we're going to work all the way up to the gear that you can only use at 140. anyways without further ado this vid's going to be super long let's get into it by the way, this comprehensive gear guide is for the people who, you know, don't really spend that many crowns in the game. They don't get gear from packs. They don't buy bundles. They pretty much only have a membership to work with. Anyways, with that being said, let's get into some of the first gear that you'll actually use at the beginning of the game. So, anyways, the gear that you're going to want to use from levels 1 through 24. So, these are the levels that you're in Wizard City all the way through, I believe a decent chunk of Marleybone, you're going to be wanting to buy gear from the Bazaar. So the Bazaar is a shop that is located in Old Town, Wizard City, where you can literally just buy whatever gear is available, whatever gear is on the market right now. This will definitely supply you with the best gear all the way up until level 24. 25 give or take and we'll get into that later but um pretty much yeah that's that's it it's gonna have the best gear you're gonna get your a thames your best of thames your best amulets your best rings your best decks best hats robes boots etc it's all going to be from the bazaar because there aren't actually many good places to farm for any gear at this low of level so yeah that's pretty much what you're working with here Another thing that I would like to mention is it is pretty much up to you to decide what is the best gear that caters to your playstyle. So for example, right, if I'm going to be attacking a lot on my myth, then maybe this adventurer's robe is the best option for me because it gives three myth damage. You know, maybe I want health, so I'll get this robe with 216 max health. It really just kind of depends on the playstyle and the stats that you want to go for on each one of your wizards. So another thing that you're going to want to be looking out for is actually a mount that gives stats on it. Now, the only mount, I mean, I guess not the only one, but the best one that you can most definitely get for free is going to actually be from fishing. And why this is at the beginning section of the video, kinda, is because you actually unlock fishing at level 7. Now, getting this mount, it would definitely help if you actually had access to, you know, fishing spells like buoy chests, etc. that are obtained at higher levels. But you do unlock fishing at level 7, and what you definitely want to be going for, you know, just at like some point in your playthrough. And so if you want a free mount, if you want a free mount with 2% universal damage, it's definitely very, very helpful. You're going to want to come to the Polarian Shipwreck House. So this is a house, this is a bundle house actually, so if you don't buy, if you don't buy bundles, I mean don't worry about it, because if you make make a friend who actually has this house you can fish in their house and pretty much reap all the benefits from that so the battle narble mount which of course is the mount that gives the two percent universal damage is available from chests that you get from you know the assortment of fish that are in the Polarian shipwreck house so you might have a chance of getting that i would definitely recommend coming here if you have memberships or in the zero energy fishing benefit as that would help you a lot and you could pretty much get them out for free it wouldn't cost you anything especially during that member benefit so it's definitely a good time but keep this in you know keep this in mind in the background while you're playing whiz because a stats mount would definitely help you so this is the best one that you can get for free to my knowledge so the next best set of gear in the game, next best gear, comes from 
the Pagoda of Harmony as well as the Hollow Mountain. So these are two separate dungeons in Kembalong Village, which is actually a side quest that I believe you get from the sergeant who is in Krakatopia. You actually access this part of Mushu, I suppose, through Krakatopia, through one of the teleporters here. Take that boat over, and then you're here, pretty much. And so once you get the quest, you're going to go to the Pagoda, Pagoda of Harmony first, and then after that, I believe you go to Hollow Mountain. So what's interesting about this dungeon is both of these instances actually are going to drop gear that you want i believe some of the gears from the temple guardian some of the gears from master tonkatsu which is like the final boss of the dungeons but i know there's definitely some gear in the pagoda of harmony as well and if i listed if i wanted to list every single piece of gear and where it's dropped for each school we would be here for an hour just because of how spread out it is in Kembalong village but just know that if you do want some good gear for levels 25 to use through level 29 then here Kembalong village is definitely a good place to go Alright, so the next place that drops the next best gear that you'll be using for levels 30 through 39, and by the way, when I say that levels 30 through 39, obviously you could use the Zeus gear until like level 50 or whatever before switching, but I'm just saying those little increments of levels are the levels that you are going to be playing throughout the game until you actually unlock better gear. So that's what that means if you don't know, but you'll be using these pretty much through levels 30 through 39 until you unlock better gear. So what you're going to want to farm is this Mount Olympus dungeon. It is located in the Garden of Hesperides in, I believe you get it here through Cyclops Lane through some sort of chariot quest. Anyways, at level 30, I believe Cyrus Drake, Romulus, one of those people will have the quest for you. And you're going to want to farm Zeus for obviously the Zeus hat, the Zeus robe, as well as the Zeus boots. And then another thing that is very, very important, something that is absolutely essential, a must-have, seriously, for questing, it, it's just an absolute lifesaver, is the Sky Iron Hostile Wand. It gives 10% damage at level 30, which is just absolutely insane. So you get that from the Ares boss, which is right before the Zeus fight, actually. So it's actually a guaranteed drop. So if you do the dungeon once, you're guaranteed to get it. I know a lot of people who actually do this dungeon just once so they can fight Ares, get the Sky Iron Hosta, and then move on in quest. So whatever you want, you can do that. But Zeus also drops some really good gear as well. But the Sky Iron Hosta, I just highly recommend it as you're going to be using that wand until like over level 100. Seriously, it's absolutely insane. So... So this next set of gear you will be using through levels 40 through 55, and that is going to be the gear from Barkingham Palace. Now, it's so interesting, this dungeon, why I like the gear so much is because the gear is extremely offensive, which is just awesome for solo questing. But anyways, I don't know why a lot of people don't farm this. I don't know why a lot more people don't farm this, but anyways, the best gear... 100% you are going to want the ring. You are going to want the ring from Barkingham Palace. It's located in the state wing and it is dropped by the boss Billy the Cutter. So keep in mind he is a wooden skeleton key boss so you're going to want to have someone with you or you're going to want to pack a wooden skeleton key yourself to actually access his room. But what's really awesome is he drops a ring that actually gives damage which I don't believe any rings at this point in the game at this level actually do so that will definitely help you a lot and then of course the final boss of dr jackal who is located yeah by the rooftop wait where's the rooftop hold on where's the rooftop it's over here okay yeah <laughs> anyways dr jackal the boss the final boss of the whole barkingham palace located on the rooftop in this instance right here he drops the final set of gear there's actually three tiers of it but you're definitely going to want the you know tier one set of gear as it gives 100 percent definitively the most damage for your wizards so you're definitely gonna want that hat robe and boots all very very good all very very good drops from him they look really cool too so that's a bonus but anyways that's it for barkingham palace let's move on so as for the next set of gear you will be using it through levels 56 through 59 and that is actually the winter tusk graft gear so it's from this carax strong thread guy equipment recipes this is where you're going to want to get it but anyways the reason why this gear is just so good is it has absolutely life-changing stats i mean What's awesome about this is if you don't want to farm Zigzag or Waterworks, which is the dungeons that actually, you know, drop better gear than this one by a little bit, this is actually a really good alternative, so if you just want to stick to crafting it, it has really good stats, as you can see. The gear gives a ton of damage, a good amount of crit, power pips, a lot of health. It will definitely help carry your wizard throughout, uh, throughout his journey, because this is also kind of the point in the game where 
the game gets especially hard, so you're definitely going to want some pretty good gear. So Winter Chest Grafted Gear is amazing, and you can definitely skip these next two dungeons if you're okay with rocking a little bit worse gear. But I wanted to leave this in the video, as it is definitely a really good option. So what actually, what level of crafter do you actually need to be to get this gear? I have no idea. Wait, does it say like requirements or something? I don't think it does, but anyways... No, it doesn't. Okay, Chris. All right. Anyways, <laughs> I don't actually know what level you're gonna be, but make sure you're leveling up your crafting throughout the worlds because this is just really good gear. Anyways, let's move on. So this next set of gear is going to be the waterworks set of gear dropped by the final boss of waterworks. So this is gear that you're potentially going to be using from level 60 all the way to level 99. So this gear is definitely really important. It's at a crucial point in the game, and you definitely want it. So. All of the final, or all the final gear, all of the gear is dropped by the final boss. His name is Sylvester Glowstorm. He is at the very end of the dungeon. Let me see if I actually have some waterworks gear on me to show you guys. So yeah, as you can see, the gear right here, definitely a little bit better than the Winter Tusk Crafted gear. It is very, very, very good, and it will serve you very well for a really long time in the game. Not to mention the middle boss of the dungeon, the boss that is halfway through. His name is Leska Charmbreak. He is a squid, and he can actually drop the Waterworks hat as well. So if you just need the Waterworks hat, and you quite possibly have all of the other gear, then you can just pretty much farm him. You can go halfway through the dungeon and then restart again if you don't get it. So that's pretty cool, and yeah, definitely noteworthy. Thought I'd put that in there. Alright, so the next location on this list actually provides an alternative to Waterworks gear. The reason why some might say that the zigzag gear is better than the waterworks gear, at least for some schools, and in my opinion I definitely think it is, and the reason for that is because the gear is definitely a lot more offensive, especially most notably with the damage differences in between pieces of gear. I think it's really awesome. But anyways, you get this set of gear from Amit the Devourer. He is located in the House of Scales, which is the big dungeon right here. You, you really can't miss it. It's, uh, it's quite flamboyant, but anyways, you actually get to this area. It's one of the four dungeons, so it is a side quest, and you get to this area by, I believe, like, using a Mander statue or something. I should know because I actually used it a few minutes ago, but <laughs> you get here by using a Mander statue in Krakatopia in the Balance School, and that's how you actually get here, but you gotta do lower zigzag first, and then you get to the House of Scales. The only thing that I would warn people about with the, uh, with the House of Scales is that the gear drop rates are very, very low, so I would recommend most people actually farm waterworks because it's just, you're going to get more gear in less time that way, but if you want to go for zigzag because of its specially catered offensive stats, then go for it. Another thing worth mentioning is the boss in Lower Zigzag named like, I don't know how to pronounce this, but like Mo Lahars or however you say it, actually drops amulets that give damage for each of the different schools. So if you want a unique item such as that, because amulets at this level, I don't believe actually give any damage except for the ones from this guy. So maybe farm him if you want a little bit of extra damage on your wizards. But yeah, he's just a regular boss that is present in Lower Zigzag. So if you want some amulets with damage, then go ahead and farm him. I'm pretty sure he's just part of the main quest line of the dungeon. Now the next set of gear that I thought would be worth mentioning in this guide is actually the Avalon crafted gear that you get from Llewellyn here. I'm not actually sure if there's any other Avalon crafted gear that you can get. There probably is, but anyways, this guy does have most of the important stuff here. So if you don't want to farm waterworks or zigzag, this guy actually has some pretty good, pretty good alternatives as you can see. Let's see, where is the death one actually? I kind of want to compare just to my waterworks road that I have equipped right now. Hold on, which one is the death? Here we go. So long coat of the of the wold right here. As you can see, it is it definitely has differing stats from the waterworks here, but overall there is not too big of a difference. You're losing a little bit of damage there. But I wanted to include this because if you know you're fine with crafting gear instead of farming for it, then this is a decent alternative. You're pretty much gonna be using this set of gear through levels 76 through 99, possibly, if you're not going to craft any or try to attempt to get any of the other gear. Uh, mentioned after this, but yeah, thought I'd throw this in here. So next up on our list, we have Azteca Crafted Gear. So this gear is actually really, really good for the level that you get it at. It is also, once again, much like the Avalon Crafted Gear. I mean, it's better than the Avalon Crafted Gear, definitely, because it's in Azteca, but <clears throat> it is definitely a decent alternative for both the Zigzag and Waterworks gear. Let me just, you know, show you some of the gear here. You don't really want any of this gear though as it gives like no resist but if you you know just do a little bit of scrolling you can definitely find gear that 
caters to the stats that you want so i definitely recommend it so this is the robe shopkeeper right here if you want the azteca hat and boots shopkeeper his name is popol the white paper and he is located in alto alto so that is where you get all of the azteca crafting gear once again just super good alternatives if you don't want to actually farm and if you do actually end up crafting this here you'll definitely be using it for like levels 84 through 99 or something so definitely quite a while and definitely worthy gear to craft. So the next boss that you're going to want to be farming is this gladiator Dimicaris guy so you are going to want to farm him for his ring his really good ring that gives like 10 universal damage like 30 block a bunch of power pip just overall a very very good ring definitely the best for this level so this guy is located in the where does it actually say on the map here okay it actually does say where he is but he is located in Mount Olympus he's a secret boss that you got to go through the little cage right here to the pit of the Noxie. I think that's what this is called and then just farm him pretty much the only thing that you want from him is the awesome ring that he drops by the way i forgot to mention that both the alpha and omega ring as well as the piece of gear that i'm about to show you right now and the boss to get it from you're pretty much going to be using those pieces of gear from levels 90 to 99 so anyways the next piece of gear that you're going to want to farm is another piece of gear in aquila located in the final dungeon of tartarus so you got to go through this door here and then boom there he is cronus so what he drops what the prize possession from him is do i have it yeah i do okay perfect it's actually the blade of the fell titan so as you can see super good stats on an athame for level 90 17 percent power pit 15 percent damage the most notable thing overall just a really really good athame so yep he's a secret boss that's pretty much the only thing you want from him all right so the next pieces of gear that you're going to want to be farming come from Darkmoor. I'm pretty sure all of you knew that this was going to be next on the list. So obviously you're going to want to farm the final boss of the graveyard Malastare for his hat, robe, and boots that are just really really good like the best in the game for this level and you'll pretty much be using this gear if you don't want to make any you know side alternatives you're pretty much going to be using it through levels 100 through 129 and also the first boss of the graveyard also very worthy to note is Yevgeny and he actually drops a really really good athame as well I'm actually currently using it right now so it has like a different name depending on which school you are but this is the Lord of Death's Razor so this is the death version and as you can see really really good stats definitely a lot better than Blade of the Feld Titan just extra jewels extra damage just extra everything on top of what you already had so that is the first boss in the graveyard who drops that so next up is going to be a piece of gear and amulet that is found in the upper halls now one thing to note about this amulet so it's the shane amulet it gives a decent amount of crit so shane von shane is the last boss of the upper halls right here and that is who drops that that is who drops the shane amulet obviously so anyways though the a thing about this piece of gear though i'm putting it on this list just so you guys who are running through darkmoor can keep an eye out for it so this amulet, the reason why amulets like these and like the Divine Amulet and the Morganth Amulet aren't as important as they once were is because crit just isn't as important as, as important as it once was. You just need less crit to actually critical on mobs. However, it is still a really good piece of gear. I actually think I have the Shane Amulet, I believe. Is that it? No, it's definitely not. Yeah, Death Seeker's Talisman. This is it right here. So it does give some pretty decent stats. It is a pretty good amulet, resist, crit, pierce, all that good stuff. But, I mean, the thing is, I don't know if this is necessarily worthwhile to put time into farming into, though, when you could just go ahead on your questing, because it is replaced with an absolute necessary alternative at level 130. But hey, if you want to go for it, the option is definitely there, and it's still a good piece of gear. Alright, so for this next boss, you're definitely going to want to be farming for her Athame or perhaps her Amulet and you're pretty much going to want to be using these pieces of gear from like levels 100 through levels 129 if you're not going to have any alternatives in between. But yeah, anyways, the boss is Morganth as you can probably tell by the name Morganth's Chamber. So she drops a decent Amulet that is very, very similar to the Shane's Amulet. Like I said, definitely not essential to farm as, you know, Amulets these days and the crit they give. Crit is just weird and amulets don't really give that much of it so really farm at your own risk or at your own self-worth or whatever but the athame that morganth actually 
gives is very, very good. I still use the Athame on my fire. I don't believe I actually got the Morganth Athame. Yeah, no, I definitely didn't get the Morganth Athame on this wizard, but it is definitely a good alternative to the Yevgeny Athame, but it's really going to come down to personal preference at this point. So yeah, that's pretty much what you're going to want to farm for Morganth. Alright, yes, we're finally getting to that segment of the video where you guys can actually start upgrading your wand from the Sky Iron Hosta. Of course, unless you pay for pack wands or whatever, but anyways, if you are a, you know, semi-free-to-play person, the next best alternative after the Sky Iron Hosta, once you're appropriate level, which is 115, and you're pretty much going to want to be using these 115 wands up until, I would say, about 124, and you'll get that upgrade for these wands, and I'll explain that in a second, but basically, for the level 115 wands, so for example, Ignis's Torch Staff right here, very, very good wands to use, obviously have a lot more damage than the Sky Iron Hosta, and then some crit and pierce on top of that. Definitely good wands. These are actually really, really easy to craft, so I definitely recommend going for these after, you know, you're done with the Sky Iron Hosta and you're level 115. So once again, make sure to level up that crafting because it's going to be really, really useful for you. And then since I'm already here, I might as well explain the upgrade to these wands that you're going to want after, you know, you reach level 125. So it's the focused wands. So pretty much you're going to actually need the the original legendary weapon so we have baba yaga's focus mace you would need to craft the legendary weapon first once you get it at level 115 you're going to want to craft that first then you get to upgrade it to a focused mace a focused mace so it gives extra damage it gives like a bunch of energy it gives a lot of different utilities on top of it but the main thing that you're going to be wanting is definitely that extra crit and extra damage on the wand. So, yep, the upgrade comes at level 125 for that, and you're pretty much going to be using the focused weapons all the way until level 139, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, when you get an upgrade for that then, which I'll explain later, but yeah. Alright, so the next piece of gear that you're going to want to be going for is the rings, the Mimic rings dropped by the Skeleton Key Boss Mimic. I believe I have one of them on me right now. Yeah, here we go. Ghost Dog's Dire Loop, so it's a different name corresponding to the school that you are, so similar to the Yevgenia theme. But what's really cool about these rings is they've got a ton of crit, ton of damage on them, so super good for the level that you get them at. Once again, this is another one where it's like it's by no means essential to farm, Well, I guess you could say that for any... Thing, any piece of gear on this list but it's definitely good to have if you've already gotten it on like a different wizard because these rings i will warn you are decently rare but if you do get these rings it'll pretty much serve you up until level 120 to about level 137 so you'll definitely be using them for quite a while they'll definitely help help out quite a bit but just keep in mind they are a little bit of rare drops from the mimic but yep it's from the mimic boss he's in agrabah mirage so yeah that's where you get it so you might be wondering why I am actually back at the bazaar, and it is to tell you a piece of information that I actually hadn't known for quite a while, but so to get your next, you know, couple pieces of gear that are replacements for the Darkmoor hat and boots, it's called the Kabbalist gear. You're pretty much going to be using it for in between like levels 125 and 129. So yeah, you'll get the gear at 125 as an upgrade to Darkmoor. And the reason why I'm at the bazaar is you can actually buy this gear from the bazaar. I know it's absolutely insane because of just how good this gear is, but if I go to the C section right here, like for example, I can buy the Cabal Hood of Disruption. You know, it gives great crit, it gives great damage, it gives great power pips, shadow rating, it gives all that good stuff. So you're going to want to replace your hat with one of these Cabal Hoods that are, you know, corresponding to your school. You're also going to want to replace your boots as well. The Dark Boy robe is still relevant at this level, so you, there's no, like, don't buy a Cabal robe. They're just really, really bad. But if I go to the C section as well on this, on this, uh, <laughs> I was about to call it a list. I guess it is a list of sorts, but yep, here you go. Cabalist gear. <laughs> it's really awesome because you actually used to farm this gear in the Secret Tunnel, which was a dungeon in Imperia, but now you can just buy it directly from the Bazaar because people just have so much of it. So yeah, there you go. This is really, really good gear that you can get super duper easily. So make sure to replace your hat and boots at level 125 as you can do it super easily. So the next piece of gear that you're going to want to obtain is going to be from Corporal Tennyson. He is a skeleton key boss located in the Xanadu sewer area. So here he is right here. Here's the sigil. Here's some guys actually going into pharma right now. And so the main reason you want to go for this guy is going to be for his awesome robe, which you're pretty much going to be using 
from levels like 125 and beyond pretty much because there is really no better robe than the Tennyson robe in the game. However, I would like to say that Tennyson robe is only better for some schools, usually the more offensive schools as it tends to give more damage. But anyways, I think it is great to farm for if you don't want to go for the Dark Moor robe and you're of appropriate level, then hey, why not? I mean, it only costs a gold key. The gold, I mean, <laughs> the drop rate, not the gold rate, what? For the piece of gear. The drop rate for the piece of gear is decently low. I mean, I got it first try on my fire, but I've heard a lot of people like say that it took them so many runs to get the Tennyson robe, but I think if you just put in the work, then you could definitely get it. But anyways, though, it's a really good robe, great alternative to the Darkmoor robe. For some schools, actually using the Darkmoor robe is still better because, let's say for Storm example, because of the accuracy that it does give and how it boosts that. So it really, really depends on personal preference and playstyle, but Tennyson is a very good one to have. So the next pieces of gear that you're going to want to be going for is going to be the Dragoon gear. And you're going to want to be going for the Dragoon hat, as well as the Dragoon boots, as well as the Dragoon amulet. The reason why you're going for these three pieces of gear in particular is the boots as well as the hat are just very, very good pieces of gear. As you can see, it just gives like a ton of good stats, a ton of good cards. And then as for the amulet though... What is really, really important to note about the amulet is, of course, it does have good stats, but the amulet is really the only thing that you can substitute in a set of gear to benefit you the most as the Dragoon set bonus, as you can see, definitely, it gives a lot of good stuff. So you want the three pieces, though, at least to get the extra damage right there. And then, so if you replace the amulet, you're not really going to be sacrificing much besides a little bit of crit. Whereas if you sacrifice, let's say, in a Thame or maybe a Ring, you would definitely be losing out on a lot of damage. So you're going to want to be going for those three pieces in particular. And you're pretty much going to be using the Dragoon gear for <laughs> really just 130 and beyond. Because there isn't really any better gear than the Dragoon gear that is out right now. So the way to actually obtain this Dragoon gear is by collecting reagents that you get throughout the Catacombs dungeon, which is the dungeon that I'm in right now. You also need the prequisite Vanguard boots as well, which you can craft using more reagents, or if you're lucky, you might get them from a boss in here. But definitively, the best place to farm reagents, at least in my opinion, is the King Detritus boss. The, the whole King Detritus dungeon, if you do it during double reagents, will get you around like 17 alchemical extract or something per run, which is absolutely insane because the runs don't take long there's always a lot of wizards farming it and overall i think it definitely makes it very very worthwhile even though the gear is time consuming to get the stats i believe make it very very worth it so the next piece of gear that you're going to want to be looking out for is dropped by the arachna magna magus i believe is how you say his name and he is located in the elemental forest right here in the elemental grove which is like the final little alcove of the elemental forest so he is the final boss of this little dungeon here and we are in the husk imperia and the piece of gear that you're going to want from him is going to be the paradox deck now this deck is super duper good right here as you can see lots of crit lots of block as well as a triangle socket that you can socket pips or accuracy on it makes this one of the best decks in the game that you can pretty much use for the whole rest of the game gives some health as well just overall a really really good deck so once again drop from the arachna guy and um yeah all right so the next couple pieces of gear that you're going to want to be looking out for are going to be the director and executive rings that drop from this uwe guy who is in uwe's workshop which is located in sweetsburg i believe some of these rings also drop for heidi as well heidi is a boss that is located in gutenstadt which is She's farmed quite a bit as well and is quite popular among a lot of players, but Uwe, I'm pretty sure, actually drops every single one for pretty much every single school, so I definitely recommend him. And what's so good about the Director and Executive Rings, I don't actually think I have any on my fire. No, I think I only have the Consulate ones, but I have I have a Director one on my death. But the reason why is these are the best rings in Caramel that give you the highest amount of damage as well as crit. And between the Executive and Directors, I personally prefer the Executive Rings just because they definitely give a bit more damage than the Directors. But one thing that is also people one thing that people take into consideration is also the jewels that uh sorry the song the caramel song is just distracting me i can't help it but anyways <laughs> one thing that uh, people hold in high regard is the different jewels that are on the different jewel sockets that are on each of the rings so it really comes down to personal preference but both executive and director rings are really really good but i suggest farming for the executives but anyways yeah you get them from uwe and those are pretty much the rings that you get i believe at level 138 and you pretty much use them from then on 
And last but certainly not least is going to be the caramel crafted amulets, crafted decks, as well as crafted wands that you get from my boy Johan here. So I'll explain why each of these is important, but you gotta have, once again, your crafting, you know, leveled up quite a bit for these, but pretty much the wands are upgrades from the focused wands that you will get in the Arcanum. These give a lot more crit, a lot more damage, I believe more shad rating as well. They also look amazing, by the way, but that, I guess, is besides the point. You can also craft this other gear that is very similar to Dragoon gear. The reason why I don't put this in the video, though, and I don't recommend going for this gear, is because the Dragoon gear is so much better because it actually gives that set bonus, so these don't actually give set bonuses, which overall, in my opinion, just make them worse pieces of gear, but hey... It is an alternative if you want it, but anyways, so you're going to mainly want to go for the wands because they're better than the focused ones, and then the amulets, it's really going to depend on what school you are, but the thing is you might be sacrificing a dragoon set bonus if you want to replace your dragoon amulet, but the good thing about these amulets, once again, it really depends on what school you are, but if you need that extra resist and that extra block and that extra health, then you can go for it. Maybe, maybe if you're like an ice or something, I believe the ice amulet is actually like very, very insane. Hold on. Yeah, like 8% resist. Life gets 8% resist as well. It really depends on what build you're going for, but I definitely recommend these if they are interested or if they cater you cater to your playstyle at all and then another thing is the caramel deck so these are definitely pretty good i highly recommend farming for the paradox deck but if you don't feel like doing that you would rather just craft it for some reason then these alternatives are pretty much exactly the same as paradox decks they give like maybe a little bit more health maybe the paradox deck gives a little bit more crit but overall they're pretty much the same they give make sure to actually craft the ones with the triangle sockets though so you can make the best use of that socket best use as possible but anyways those are good alternatives really depends on what you want to do but anyways that is pretty much going to be it for this complete gear guide i really hope this did help you guys and if it did i would very much appreciate a like because this vid took a lot of time to make and research or maybe a sub if you're looking forward to future content and yeah it's a pretty good way of supporting me by the time of me posting this i'm pretty sure we're like almost at 10k subs so that would be really awesome to hit anytime soon so that would be cool but hey you don't have to i just hope this did help you Anyways, though, that's going to be all for me, everyone. I'll see you all in the next video or stream, whenever that may be. So take care, and peace out, guys.